because back in the day, black people, black women, black men, they worked together. They pooled their resources together. We had to work together. We had to work together. And what's wrong with us working together today? What's wrong, ladies, with you being submissive to your husband? Man, what's wrong with you guys loving your wives as Christ loves the church? Just saying. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Perry Walker. And the other day, I caught a podcast from the Average Man channel. Now, I don't always watch channels like that because they lean heavy on the red pill. But he had an interesting guest on and a very interesting topic. And I will leave a full link to that video in the description below. The topic was men are afraid of being misused or used, especially when it comes to relationships. And what made the topic so interesting is because the gentleman that was being interviewed was an older millennial, so he's closer to being a Gen Xer. So he thinks more like my generation, I'm a Gen Xer. And one of the common complaints I hear a lot from the younger generation is that a lot of us guys, from the older generation don't know how it is. Things have changed. Dating dynamics have changed. And certainly, I wouldn't give any arguments about that. I would say that's true to an extent in some kind of way. But I would say a lot of things aren't so different. And this is what I mean, is that today, because of social media and smartphones and the ability to document and record every aspect of your life with a push of a button or to click on an app, you can expose the things that you are doing. Back in the day, we didn't have these devices. So it was very, very easy to hide in the shadows, especially if you were a person of dubious character. If you were a guy that wanted to play multiple women, there was really no way for them to really get a hold of you except via a pager or something like that, right? And if you were a woman that has secrets, it was easy for you to hide because there was no way to track where you were at or to verify what you were saying is true or false. Now, he did mention that when it pertains to this gender wars we're in, right, that white men have been in this gender war for ages, ever since the dawn of feminism. And that, from what I understand, modern feminism from the 1920s up until now. And he coined the white man as the original passport bros because I remember, like he remembered, I would see a lot of white men with Asian wives, especially those that fought in Vietnam and certainly throughout the years. I didn't start seeing a lot of black men with foreign wives until like, the mid 80s, late 80s. And I never questioned why, you know, because A, I was a teen during the 80s. And this whole thing about red pill, MGTOW, gender wars, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing, at least at my level being a young man, it wasn't a thing yet. But I think one thing that both generations had to be concerned with as men was being used by a woman. And women certainly can say the same thing because I've, I had friends that were considered the good looking guy that would be juggling multiple girls at the same time, multiple women at the same time, bragging about it. And as ignorant young men, we would praise that type of guy because we thought he was a man's man for doing that. And, you know, certainly when I became a Christian, I understood that that behavior was not acceptable and that wasn't good behavior to move in. And I could only imagine the bitterness between the sexes building up because if I had friends doing that, then there was thousands of men and women participating in this type of hookup culture, as they call it today. So you have both men and women that were concerned about being used and abused in some kind of way. But now, uh, with these devices we have, we're able to express our disdain 
and our disapproval of it, you know, and some spaces can get really, really toxic. You know, there's some real dark places in the Red Pill MGTOW society, some real dark places in the sisterhood community uh, when they, uh, what what's that term that they were using? Uh, decentering men, yeah. And even some Asian countries now in Korea where they had this movement where women were saying no marriage, no babies, no engaging with men, right? So it's not just, just a Western thing. Some people say it's a Western influenced country thing. But even some of the women in China, you know, they're they're giving up. They don't they don't want to um they don't want to be a part of engaging with men. And the story is the same to some degree. Uh it all boils down to finances, uh feeling like you're being taken granted, taking for taken for granted by the other sex. But in the black community, we really did not have this problem prior to 1964. A lot of black women were married. There was more married couples. And we didn't start seeing the, the marriage rate and a single parent rate amongst the African-American community start spiraling out of control until after 1964. Now, some say that a lot of the white women use that as an opportunity to recruit black women in their feminist cause. You know, certainly if I go through the data, like a lot of men and a lot of channels have went through the data and showed it, but I'm not sure if these guys and even some of the women that try to use the data are cherry picking the data because I really don't know the full quality of the relationships prior to 1964 other than the things I've heard from my own family. And that's just my family that doesn't encapsulate every family, every African-American family. But one thing is true is that black women were more likely to be married in a home with children prior to 1964, as opposed to single with children. So there were more families, intact families. And the black community was thriving as a community, even in the face of the racial, social hardships that they faced. The new thing today is this 50-50. Because most men that even make $100,000 a year cannot afford for their wife to be at home or be a stay-at-home mom. And now a lot of women are starting to see, particularly in the African-American community, that Trying to get out here and work and make it on your own is hard, it's difficult, and they want to go back to that tradition, right? Traditional family setup. But some of the guys say they want that, but they don't want to be traditional themselves. Now, to their defense, from the things I've seen and some of the things I've heard, I could see their argument. Right. And and it's it could come across very unfair to be expected to be the sole provider and protector. But the the part about you being the homemaker, the nurturer. And, you know, and submitting to the husband is looked at as from a feminist point of view. So it's kind of like. You want the traditional or the women want the traditional aspect of the relationship now because they see how hard it is, but they don't want the, the traditional aspect of being submissive to their husband, but they want the husband to be traditional. Now, I don't have that problem because I'm in a traditional marriage, but my wife 
and I, I, w- I don't want to say 50-50, but I can't um, provide for my household just on my income. Now, I could pay all the bills, and I do pay the majority of the bills, but we won't have any room for anything else. So my wife had to come and help me, and she doesn't have a problem with that. Would she prefer to still be at home? Yes. But we both understand that in these times, it's, it's just not possible to do it on one income. And, and she told me she wouldn't dare put that type of pressure on me. And she still sees me as the leader, protector, provider of the home. And my wife is very submissive. Now, she could be spicy at times, but she's very submissive. And I don't have an issue with her uh, going and getting nails done and doing the pampering. She does because she works hard like I work hard. So we work hard, we play hard. You know, but my wife is also very frugal. She understands that we just can't spend money and just do whatever we want. That if we want to do something that's major, we're going to have to save for it like we're going on a cruise that we had to pay for over the course of a year. Now, some people can pay for cruises all out because, like I said, everyone's situation is different. But a lot of these fellas are saying that some women, they don't want to do that. Say, I don't want to go 50-50. And I've even seen some videos of some young ladies even uh, putting down what they call the 50-50 man. And some of the points I could see when, when, when you talk about this 50-50 thing, but when you're in a marriage, especially today, as times have changed, the buying power of the dollar has greatly decreased. Um Everybody and their mama pretty much has a college degree. So it's not a rare thing like back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even early 90s to have, uh, you know, having a college degree was considered like, ooh, you got a degree, so now you're going to get paid more. Now, people with degrees still get paid more than people without degrees, but the the difference in the amount of pay has decreased, right? <clears throat> and now we have competition from all across the world. So it's not like uh, someone that becomes an engineer here or in the technical field like I'm in has to only comp- uh, not only compete with people from the United States, but they have to com- compete with everyone all across the world as jobs can be outsourced, moved, or people of... Uh, more high economic status from these other countries are able to come over here and the job market is very, very competitive. So with the cost of living, a competitive job market, it is only reasonable that men and women have to work together. Now, when speaking with my mom about this thing, you know, about how things were back in her day and her mom day, she said that her parents always had to work together. She said black folk always had to work together. Black men and black women, they needed each other. They depended on each other. Um, my grandmother, she worked cleaning houses, and uh, I believe she worked at the DPS and all that stuff. And my grandfather, I never met him. He died before I was born. You know, he did their thing. And even before that, they, uh, they picked cotton because it was a big deal here in Texas during the uh, 60s and before that to pick cotton, right? So they did stuff like that. And as technology changed, you know, things were different, right? But the men and the women, particularly in the black community, had no problem working together. We had to work together because there was so much against the black family back then that Everybody had to work together. Now, were there uh, relationship issues? I'm sure there was. You know, a lot of these red pill guys would paint a picture that black people were together, family was together, and everything was great. And I'm sure there was a lot of awesome relationships, but I'm sure there was also a lot of problems with relationships because there's no such thing as a perfect relationship, okay? But... I really believe that as a black community, this the issues, the relationship dynamics really affects us more 
because we went from being a community where families were intact. Women had babies when they were married. Black women were most likely to be married than white women. To now, black women are the least to be married and more likely to be single parents. And our community uh, between the men and the women seems to be getting more divided each day. And we really need our black men and our black women, those that desire to be in relationships together to really come together because you cannot have a thriving community without thriving families, thriving marriages and thriving families, right? Um, if you don't have that nucleus and that community, you don't have anything because we managed to be a strong people even in the face of racial injustice back then because we had strong family units, even with the problems and all that came with it, you know? But today, there is no family cohesion in the black community. And to hear some of our sisters say, well, I'm not going to go 50-50 with no man. If he ain't got what I got, then I don't want him. And they need to understand that the average man, when you put every man together with every ethnicity, the average man's pay is just a little over $64,000, I believe, you know. And when you start breaking it up by ethnicities, the black man, average pay is a little over forty five, maybe $50,000, right? And I've even looked at some of the average pay of some women and still women still get paid less than men and black women still get paid less than black men on average. But wouldn't it be better if you had two people pulling together, pulling their resources together, working together, giving honor to one another and building strong, thriving families to build strong, thriving communities? Who cares who makes more than who? As long as you're working together and loving each other and respecting and honoring one another. Now, to my sisters, y'all got this part real bad. If, if you make money, more money than the fella, you... Some of you got some of you women, some of our ladies feel like they don't have to be submissive, right? And they see that submissive word as someone just telling you what to do for no rhyme or reason just because they want to do that. No, it's the natural order of God. If you have a man, a man of God, a man that's respectable and honorable, he understands that when he leads, he's not leading to be some abusive, tyrannical brute. And we got to stop looking at each other like that. The men got to stop looking at the women as these money-hungry gold digger vipers. And the women need to stop looking at the men as these, uh, what they say, the dusty, domineering brutes. That's the best way I can say it. But anyhow, I've been talking a long time. And... As an older black man, I'm 55, and seeing my young brothers talk, especially when they start talking more level-headed and they get off of this crazy, I'm going to get my passport, I'm leaving these ratchet women behind, and they're really vulnerable, and they start talking with reason, I'm able to understand more their plight. Is that they want to be husbands, and they want to be faithful men, but they they understand that during this climate, they can't just take care of the household on their own. They want someone to work with them and who wouldn't look down on them because they need that help. Because back in the day, black people, black women, black men, they worked together. They pooled their resources together. It wasn't like we had these Rockefeller legacies we had to work together. We had to work together. And what's wrong with us working together today? What's wrong, ladies, with you being submissive to your husband? Man, what's wrong with you guys loving your wives as Christ loves the church? Just saying. But um, 
If you found any use in this, give me a thumbs up. It gives me a slight boost with the YouTube algorithm. If you really dig what I'm saying, you can watch another one of those videos that's up in the corner and subscribe to my channel so that you can hear more commentary on this. And like I said, I'm going to leave the link to that full video in the description below. And thank you guys for rocking with me. And I truly, truly, truly want to see the black community thrive. I want to see all communities thrive. You know, I'm just not one of these pro-black people. And I understand that some black men and some black women may marry outside of their ethnic group. But either way it goes, whomever you marry, you still gonna have to respect that person and honor each other and not give each other a hard time and not have this power struggle. So until the next time, guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace.